You're watching your health on tech. I'm Dr. John White, the Chief Medical Officer at WebMD. Do you remember when gyms were closed for part of the pandemic? Many of us turned to working out at home. Some of us took up virtual reality to reach their fitness goals, and many are still using it. But how much benefit can we really get from a virtual gym? Is it worth the time and expense? Joining me to help you determine whether virtual reality is right for your fitness goals is Dr. Jimmy Bagley. He's the Associate Professor of Kinesiology, as well as the Director of the Muscle Physiology Lab and Co-Director of the Exercise Physiology Lab at San Francisco State University. Dr. Bagley, it's great to see you today. Thanks for having me. You know, I want to start off with this interesting research that you've published that really differentiates a perceived exertion, kind of how you feel you're doing, versus actual exertion, what you're really expending in terms of energy as it relates to virtual reality. Can you explain uh, to our viewers what your research has shown? Perceived exertion is basically how you feel when you're exercising. Like you said, an actual exertion would be, for example, how many calories you're using or burning at that time. Sometimes these things will go linearly together. Like if you're running on a treadmill, you're probably going to feel like you're running on a treadmill, right? But what we found in VR with some of our studies is that people are perceiving like they're working a little bit lower intensity than they're actually working, which obviously could benefit by getting people to do this more often, potentially. But what do you say to critics that will assert, well, you're really only doing cardio, as many of these type of programs. And we know that strength training is also important as you try to get overall fitness. What's your response to that? Is, it, is that an accurate criticism or not completely right? Well, I, I think it's a great point that people bring up and I bring it up too is, so most guidelines say you should get about 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous activity a week, right? That's about 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Unfortunately, most people aren't doing that. But on top of that, you're supposed to be also doing about two days of resistance exercise per week, right? And a lot of the virtual reality games that we have out now, virtual reality experiences, don't have a lot of resistance, right? You're just moving your hands. However, you do, we do see that there are some lower body resistance exercise that people are able to do. So, you know, while the hardware is getting better and you know, things like cable machines are in the works and stuff like that, maybe even adding weights to VR... Right now, you can still get a pretty decent lower body resistance uh, exercise routine through VR. So yeah, I and you can do strength training through body weight, correct? So you could incorporate that. That's correct. So it doesn't have to be weight training. That's I, that would be great. But most people don't have access to a gym, so even body weight exercise, yoga, um, things like this, can also be resistance exercise. So how should a viewer use virtual reality? when they're trying to improve their overall fitness and wellness. How do you use it? I actually started doing this over the pandemic. Like a lot of people, I couldn't get out. The gyms were closed. And so I was planning on trying to do exercise outside as much as I could. But, you know, being inside, I got a hold of a virtual reality headset at that time. It was an Oculus Quest. But basically look at it as if I'm doing any other mode of exercise, right? So if I'm going to get on the bike for 30 minutes a day and do it, maybe I could get on and play a game for 30 minutes a day. And what I would do as well that most people could do is measure your heart rate, whether that's with a wristwatch or even the old school method. You know, you could measure your your pulse rate and look and see where your heart rate's going as you're exercising. You know, heart rate is not directly related to uh, exercise output, but it's pretty close. So if you're moving at a higher heart rate, you're probably at, you know, moderate or vigorous exercise intensity. So doing that on a, you know, maybe a weekly or biweekly basis can actually supplement what you're normally doing. What's your favorite virtual reality exercise? Yeah, that's another good question. There's so many good ones coming out now. I think I'm going to go with the old school Beat Saber game. I just think it's really fun. I thought and, you might say that. <laughs> right. And if you look at it, so I was saying that lower body, what we're finding in the lab is when we look at metabolic rate with people, we measure their oxygen consumption. Any games where you have a lot of up and down movement, squatting movement, lunging side to side, kind of like in, in that game and others, you'll probably get a little better workout. Now, a lot of viewers probably will have never tried virtual reality, or if they have, they tend to think of it kind of as a game, as opposed to a tool that they could use for overall wellness. 
So explain to our viewers who have not used VR how they might think about it when they're trying to get healthier. Yeah, it's really hard to explain if you haven't seen it. Um, but what virtual reality does, and you, you're going to start seeing other words, augmented reality, virtual reality, XR, which is extended reality and multiple other things. What it really means is that you're putting yourself in a different world. Right now we're doing it right through this computer system, kind of similar. But imagine instead of that, you've got, you know, a pretty wide field of view all the way around your eyes. And you also have haptic feedback, which is touch on your controllers and headsets. And you have auditory feedback also. So you're almost putting yourself in this environment. If you wanted to go out and run at the park or, or cycle at the park or something, people can't always get outside, right? The weather might be bad. Imagine that you could just put yourself in your favorite park or area like that virtually. It's it's kind of amazing. And the technology is getting better and better every every iteration that comes out. Just as good as going to the gym? It can be just as good as going to the gym. I wouldn't say everything. So one thing that people have mentioned is what about this sociology? What about social psychology of going to the gym and interacting with people? You know, that's something that it might be difficult to get, but we've seen with programs like Peloton and other virtual programs, you can meet people in these places or play with people you know. Now, your research has focused on human performance. What has virtual reality taught us about human performance? Yeah, my background is in human performance and muscle physiology. And so I didn't get into this until about 2016. I was introduced to virtual reality. I was we were actually contacted by a game developer named Aaron Stanton, who's the director of the Virtual Reality Institute of Health and Exercise. And he was playing these games saying like, I think I'm exercising at this point. I'm playing these virtual games and I think I'm exercising. So we got him in the lab and we measured his oxygen consumption, which tells us his metabolic rate. And he was definitely exercising. And that kind of kicked me off on this whole idea that virtual reality can be exercised, right? And now we're looking at with human performance, human performance and health go hand in hand, right? People want to get healthy to perform better or, or vice versa. So what we've seen is when people are playing these games, like you mentioned with the perceived exertion, that's always typically lower. But now we're looking at things like motivation and enjoyment and along with our metabolic measures and seeing that people actually might enjoy this better than sitting on a bike or a treadmill or something. So with performance, I think it gives us another mode, a valid mode of exercise beyond the typical sporting exercises, cycling, swimming, running, all great. I love all those. But having another mode is never bad. And they might be getting a better workout than they actually think they're doing. Right. If it's hard to behavior change is not my specialty, but getting people motivated to do things is hard, especially if they don't want to do it. But if they want to do it and they're thinking they're gaming and they're not even thinking they're exercise, that could be a benefit for a lot of people, I think. Well, Dr. Bagley, I want to thank you for taking time today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm.